Okay, um, good morning. Um, I just wanted to start off talking about um, a survey I did yesterday. And I asked uh, my year six class about some of the internet safety things that we've spoke about before and um, what things we try to instill in the students. And I've been teaching for, for over 10 years and we've had everything from passwords to not talking to strangers and all that kind of stuff. That is very much old school internet safety talks. What, what I wanted to look at today was the side of internet safety, but also the addiction side and how these tablets and cool devices are literally captivating our students. And I'll show the, the survey I came up with. And it was just a spontaneous few questions. Um, and this is what I wanted to begin with. So and uh, just tell me honestly uh, about your internet use at home. So put your hand up if you have a mobile phone. Put your hand up if you've got a mobile phone device. A phone? Anyone got a phone? Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, now put your hands down. Uh, put your hands up if you have never had your mobile device checked by mum or dad. So you've never had it checked. So you could go on anything you want. Well, one person, okay. Uh, put your hand up if you've got a social networking account. So something like Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook. Okay, put your hands down. Uh, and I'll just quickly ask how old you are. So Hannah, how old are you? 11. Uh, Eloise? 10. 10. Okay. And last question is, put your hand up if you've ever spoke to someone online that you've never met face to face. So something on Fortnite or on Xbox Live, you spoke to people. Okay, and last one, put your hands up if you've ever had anybody talking to you on online but said mean things or things that you, sh you, you didn't want to hear. Okay. Okay, so. Okay, and I've. That's a bit. I've just got one more. Put your hand up if you think. You you've ever been cyber bullied so maybe just had a horrible or slightly negative comment put your way on on the computer okay a couple of questions and right okay so just some of the questions um, I wasn't trying to deliberately catch them out or anything like that I just wanted to know honestly about whether you know, they've got a device and whether they've had horrible comments and what, what to do about it. And our job is to educate the students, to give them um, the confidence to tell parents and it not being something that is um, an uncomfortable situation for them. So uh, myself and Mr. Tallit are going to talk about some of the recommendations that we've got and also some of the things that we've come across because we both of us teach IT every day uh, for, with numerous classes, and we see the whole we see the whole whole shebang of students. So I'll hand over to Mr. Tallit, and he'll uh, give you some of his his insights. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> um, okay, I am not going to try and claim today that I can give you one app that you can download that is going to um, solve all of your worries, that's going to put your mind at rest, and your child will be completely safe. Um, I'm going to introduce you to lots of different things. Some will be relevant to you, some will be uh, completely irrelevant. I want you to perhaps download this PowerPoint at home, click on any of the blue links that you feel are relevant to you. Okay. Um, I just want to start by saying the internet is absolutely amazing. It's probably going to seem that we are trying to put you off the internet today. Um, we're going to obviously going to tell you about some risks, um, but the internet is phenomenal. Children today can do so many things that we could not do when we were growing up and we, we want them to use it safely, but we want them to uh, be able to explore, to be able to take advantage of that. 
Um, I want to raise awareness of issues. I want to inform you um, of lots of different things. Um, I want you to be able to engage with your children, know what they're doing, and um, not be lost when you're trying to talk to them about these things. I know that's something that um, parents worry about. Um, as I said, this will be available to you afterwards, so you don't need to take photos, you don't need to write things down. Anything that's in blue on this presentation, you can click on, and uh, it will take you to the website. Um, I would direct you to click on this one, which is Mrs. Rinaldi's presentation from last year. It's got loads of fantastic information, but I've deliberately made sure I haven't repeated any of that today. Uh, she talked um, about personal information and children oversharing, so um, I'd definitely go and have a look at that. Um, I'm just going to talk um, briefly about these things. It will be a bit of a whistle stop. If anybody wants to email me afterwards, I can go into more detail about any of this, so don't worry about that. Uh, the, the point at the bottom there sort of sums up what I'm saying today. Um, the internet is incredible, just like your children swimming in the water. Um, there are risks, but we need to make sure the children know how to deal with those risks. We don't stop children swimming just because there's a, a risk to them. Um, I'm going to start by talking about filtering. Um, filtering is such a fundamental thing. I think, especially here in Singapore, I think people assume that the government takes care of all that. The government does put in some filtering, but it's, um, if you like, perhaps just a token gesture. They block a few things um, that they feel are symbolic things, okay? but it doesn't go anywhere near the level of protection that uh, young children especially need. Um, there's two types of filtering. Uh, you've got uh, filtering at home, which would be on your um, broadband line coming into the home, and you've got um, mobile device filtering, which would normally be an app you have to download. Okay, it's simple as that. If you use one of those providers, I've put a link in there that you can click on, would take you straight to that. These are normally free um, when it's a home line. They often ask you when you're setting up the line whether you want this as default, and people tend to say no, assuming that they would add it later, um, but you can easily go back and add that on. Um, I know that's not very clear for you to see, but what I'm trying to say there is that you, with any decent um, filtering app, you'd normally have different levels of filtering. So based on the ages of your children, um, you can see there it will um, filter out different amounts of content. Again, um, just some of the things that a mobile filtering app would do. And at the bottom there, I've put up some of the main providers, links to take you to their mobile app for you to download. Um, I've put there filtering versus monitoring. I'm not a huge fan of um, spying on children when they're using the internet and things. I definitely want to keep them safe, but I know I remember what it was like being younger. You need to explore, you need to make some mistakes, but that needs to be done in a safe environment. Okay? So I've put up um, a sample of apps there. You can see that they all do different things. You can find an app to do anything that you want these days. Okay? Um, you can see some of those are just for you to be able to turn your child's device off whilst you're having dinner. Nice idea. Whereas some of them, you can actually track where your child is every moment of the day. You can look at every website they've been to. Um, you can even get confirmation when they try to install an app. You have to click a button to say whether it's okay to install that. Um, the big internet search providers are waking up to this fact, and they are coming out with their own apps now. They're coming out with apps that are pretty much taking the best of um, what's been available in the market for a long time. So Google are coming quite late to the party with this. They're coming up with something called Family Link. I don't know if anyone's even heard of it. Um, it's, I've said there it's, it's coming to Singapore very soon. It's already available in 38 countries. It's not going to be long before it's available on the Play Store here. Um, but it, it probably does all the things that you would want an app to do. Okay, I'll move on to talking about screen time because it's, it's everywhere at the moment. It's a, a huge issue. Um, it's made its way into the media, and once something gets into the media, it normally becomes policy soon after that. Um, I, I just want to hammer home that issue that not all screen time is bad. Okay, um, the, the media is scaremongering, and they're sort of saying, how many hours does your child spend a, um, a day on a device? It's not as simple as that. If your child is uh, using an app and they are exploring their local environment, if they're doing some um, homework, if they're looking up something that's educational, that's a really good use of screen time. That's the sort of screen time we want to promote and encourage. Okay? So I've put a link in there. You can read a really interesting thing about how you can make screen time um, high quality. How much is enough? 
again, it depends what the child is doing in that screen time. Um, what's more interesting is when a child is using it late at night, when it's affecting their sleep pattern, when they're, the first thing they do in the morning is go online. It's things like that that you might need to be more aware of than literally the amount of time they're spending. As I said, the big providers are now waking up to this. Apple have um, introduced these tools. If you download the latest operating, operating system, then it comes with this built in. Um, they simply call it screen time, okay? And it tells you how much you're using of each app. Um, it gives you controls if you want to um, limit those things. As I said, I've got a, a quote there at the bottom from Apple. I wasn't sure with that quote whether it's avoiding distractions of family life so that you can stay on your device. It, it's sort of interestingly worded. Um, Google, um, I love the quote at the top, and I think that's fundamental. They've introduced something called digital well-being, and they've come up with things called shush, where you can shush your device for a certain amount of time. It's basically enhanced do not disturb. Lots of people use do not disturb already, and it's enhancing that. They've got wind down, where you can set a bedtime, um, and your device will actually start going into um, gray mode. Okay, so it becomes less interesting for the children. They can't really look at their pictures when they're in black and white. Um, you can set time limits. This is rolling out at the moment. This is um, right at the um, cutting edge of what these companies are doing at the moment. You've got YouTube. have got something called Take a Break. If you've got a child that spends hours watching YouTube, and it is designed for that, um, it rolls into another video. It gives them suggestions of things to watch afterwards. It tries to engage them. Um, they've got a feature called Take a Break, where it will come up on the screen and it will force the child to take a break. Um, just going to touch briefly on social media and talk about what I feel are the issues with social media. Um, I share lots of stories to do with social media and social media concerns on my Twitter page. And, and so I suppose I'm surrounded by this all the time. I, I see all these things that to me, make it feel like people are becoming increasingly worried about children's use of social media. I think um, we accepted it was just part of modern day culture, but I feel that there is a, a real worry with children living their whole life through social media. Children have far more friends online than they do in real life, and that gives them a sense that they've got a really good community around them. And then it comes to that question of, if you were ever in trouble, could you actually rely on one of these people to help you? And then they think, actually, I, I haven't got someone I could go to. Um, I've said there it's addictive. The, these companies are designed to make money. They want to hook children in. They want to get them to spend as long on this as possible. I've said there about the gamification side of it. That means they try and make it seem like a game. When Snap introduced the feature that children get rewarded if they post at least one thing every day, they're trying to get children hooked on this so that they feel they have to go onto it. Um, it's known to affect self-esteem. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Uh, the perfect life syndrome, where children only portray what they want other people to see as perfect. So children are going on, and it looks like their friends have an absolutely perfect life. They go on amazing holidays. They do all these exciting things. They've got all the latest things. They look stunning in all their pictures. It's fake. Okay? But children haven't got that awareness to identify it as being fake, to question it. So they think that everyone around them is absolutely perfect, and it um, lowers their self-esteem. Um, selfie culture, it's something we hear about. Do we actually understand what it is, what the risks are, and why it's causing problems? So I'll just talk about that briefly. Um, digital addiction, I think we laughed when we first heard this term a couple of years ago, and we thought surely someone just needs to put their phone down, they just need to stop using it. It is now becoming recognized as a condition, uh, Matt Hancock, the um, Secretary of State for Health and, um, in the UK, has asked the Chief Medical Officer to look into this. There's an interim report coming in December, which I think is going to be really interesting. And off the back of that, I think we'll start seeing some big changes in policy that will obviously have a knock-on around the world. Um, feel free to just have a, a read-through of, of the quote I've put up there. The point I'm making is that if we behaved in real life the way that we do on social media, then, as it says at the bottom, you'd probably end up with the police following you, um, a psychologist or a psychiatrist or something like that. It's not normal behavior, but it has become the norm for our children. We recognize it's not normal, but they don't because it's all they've ever known. Okay? Um, if you have a look at um, Mrs. Rinaldi's um, presentation from last year, she's actually got the video where there's a man in the street 
and he's doing this. And he actually says, can I follow you? And he starts following them down the street, and then they think he's really weird. It's well worth a watch. Um, the, the, the link at the top there is absolutely fantastic. It's talking about how specifically social media affects body image. When children see, or they only put up photos of themselves looking absolutely perfect, and then they go and look in the mirror and they don't actually look like that, it, it lowers their self-esteem. Um, there's lots of research, and it's just beginning, but there is going to be so much research in the coming years about how this is affecting mental health, how this is affecting our children's um, self-image. Um, the idea that, and they're actually starting to categorize this to be able to diagnose it. I, I looked at one the other day that said if, a, if someone takes three selfies a day and doesn't share it on social media, that's the first line of diagnosing what they call self-itis. I'm sure it will come up with a better name. Um, it says if people are taking three photos a day and sharing them, then that becomes more severe. And chronic is when people are taking six photos a day and sharing them. And I'm sure that we all know people that are doing far more than that. And that's seen as chronic. Um, another good link at the bottom, how to use social media safely. That's aimed at parents and how they can help their children to use social media safely. We didn't grow up in this world. We're all learning at the moment how we can help children uh, use this safely. They're learning from their friends and what we can do at school. But really, we could do with a lesson on this every single week. We need parents to help with this. Uh, modern culture definitely encourages um, this selfie culture. Um, I was on a flight over the weekend, and I opened it up to a page about Hong Kong. The first question, where can we take selfies? Nothing about Hong Kong. Okay, that was the first question that came up. It, it is definitely a real problem. Okay? Um, as I said, there is going to be so much more research coming. Keep your eye out for this. We will um, update parents as much as we can about what we're finding in school. But the growing research at the moment um, suggests that it is generally low, um, low esteem, attention-seeking people that are most vulnerable to this um, condition. Okay? I'm not going to go through these one by one. You can have a read of them. Hopefully, you've got the message from me that this is not about stopping children using their devices. It's not about stopping them using social media, but it is about educating them to protect themselves. What we call uh, digital resilience. Okay, question things. Know when they're using too much. Um, know what they can do about it. Having access to the internet comes with responsibility. Um, the third one there is just a suggestion. I think, a, well, maybe parents, when they hand over a device to the child, they say, this is your device now. Um, it's, I need to know that you can use it. But what about the idea of saying, this is still my device, but you can borrow it as long as you use it safely? It's just changing that, um, the child's perception of what the device is, whose it is. Number four there is very much saying that you need to stay up to date with what children are doing. You need to keep yourself educated if you want to be able to help them. Um, I would very much suggest that you go through and you disable tracking in every app. No one should be able to know where your child is throughout the day when they're using that app. Um, when Snapchat introduced Snap Maps, the default setting was that everyone would know or everyone would be able to track where their child was. Okay? And that's the default setting. It obviously caused uproar, and then they changed that a few weeks later. But these people don't really have the best interests of children at heart. They have how are they going to make the most money. Okay. Um, a great link there. Um, if you ever want to be able to report a problem, you can go straight to this page, and it takes you to the page for any social media. So it's a really good link. I've actually cropped just a bit of that, but it's got loads more apps and social media that you can um, just click on one link, and it will take you to a page to report things. Um, if you want to read up on any of these issues, um, ChildNet have put together this Hot Topics page. You can, there's loads more than this as well. I've just taken some of them, but any of those blue links, if you click on that, it will take you to information so that you can educate yourself on these things. People often worry, how do they start speaking to their children that they're gonna look like a fool when they start speaking about something they know nothing about? And I totally understand that. Um, it's not about trying to seem like an expert, it's just about engaging with them, trying to understand what they're doing, making sure they're not putting themselves at risk. Um, at the bottom there, I've actually put one in, the, a link to a page that tells you how to have awkward conversations with your children. 
a lot of parents don't feel comfortable talking to their children about um, nude selfies, about um, online pornography and things, so this helps with that. Um, consider a family agreement. I, I've put a link to one example there that came from Starhub. Um, there are lots out there. You've only got to um, type in family agreements and it will come up with lots of different ideas. It, it's that about um, your phone must be down when we're having family meals, about what time is cut off at the end of the night, about whether a phone can be taken into the bedroom um, overnight and things like that. Okay. Would you like to say anything about this, Mrs. Hancock? <laughs> that was good timing. Um, there is going to be a screening of um, a, a film that's all about growing up in the digital age. It follows a family with their daily struggles of social media and things like that and how things can get really messy with families. Um, it will be shown to the students, as you can see there, and there are two opportunities for the parents to come and watch it uh, in the evening. You can also click on the link and um, the person that is promoting this has got um, lots of topics on there. You can get emailed every Tuesday about different topics to do with social media. Okay, that's the end of my part. I did say it was a bit of a whistle stop, and I really hope that will encourage you to um, get hold of this presentation, to click on some of those links, and to get engaged in what your children are doing online. So thank you very much for your attention. Okay, and if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Okay, thanks. Um, so it's, I just wanted to look at some of the issues to do with the mobile phones, which, um, which I'm not going to ask this question, but it's something that um, is linked to the survey that I, I gave before where children said, have they had their phone checked? And, and sometimes when you do surveys, people don't always give the answers that, that are true. Um, but if there is a cause for concern, um, it, it's... it's, it's it's at the parents' discretion what they do with the phones. But I've, I had parents evening last night, and um, talking to some parents, they were saying that they're on the phones all the time, they're on the computers all the time. When they try and take them off, they get upset. And that is a horrible thing to have to, have to endure. Um, but it's one of those things where it's to do with education rather than just prohibiting them from using their devices, which allows them to talk to their friends and then be educated and have their own little, little business or little world. So um, it's, it, it's, it's the parents' you know, ultimate responsibility to have that control. And when I hear sometimes parents saying they don't like that, I say, well, who's the boss? You know, who, who, who is the person that's, that's paying the, the phone bills and who's the person that's, um, you know, that's, that's supposed to be the adult here? And sometimes the child does essentially uh, tell the parent what, what they want to do. Um, and we do get sometimes children that are very tired. Um, and I say, did you go to bed at a sensible time? And they say, about 12. And I'm thinking, 12? <laughs> you know, these children are quite young, and 12 is quite late <laughs> for, for anybody. Um, but that's, a, that's another debate altogether. Um, but linking into some of the obscure apps that are emerging and this was something I sent to Mr. Ball uh, because I wanted to just get the message out there. There are numerous apps that are there to deceive parents <laughs> and uh, it's very difficult to see but on the top right you've got one which is a calculator. Now if, if I was hypothetically checking somebody's phone and there was a calculator, I'd be great, a calculator. It's not a calculator. <laughs> it's an app where they can post anonymous pictures to their friends, okay? Uh, they're, they're, kids are smart. So there's another app where it's anonymous, which is the buzzword. Lots of anonymous websites and apps are out there where you can make horrible comments about other people and not get any repercussions. There are loads of apps out there where you can you know, judge people. People have, children have two or three Instagram accounts now. Not just one, two or three. They have one for you, they have one for their friends, and they have one for their workplace. And the idea is they have different hats. And they have one that say, oh, yes, they're doing this one thing with the friends, all nice. And they maybe have another one. So that's something that scared me a little bit. I was like, wow, you've got three? And they have hidden accounts on their phones. And they have locks on their phones. And they have different sections on their phones. Not to say that you should check your phone, the phones, but this is, this is children. OK? Um, and so messaging accounts. And Musical.ly was one that I've started to learn about. 
Has anybody heard of Musical.ly? Can anyone tell me what Musical.ly is? Yeah, so they make little videos. So they get their phone, they get a, a song by whoever, and they have a nice cool background and they sing and they get likes and they get endorsements. And watching a video over the weekend about internet safety, we've got kids who are getting 300,000 likes. They're getting live streams and they are getting multiple people asking them to endorse sponsorship. These kids are making money. Like they are, spot, they are having, putting things in their bedrooms and having companies asking them. They are, they are, they are marketing points. These kids are, have got their own little businesses going. And this is what something, you know, we're saying don't go on the internet, change your password, all this old school internet safety stuff. It, this, is, this, this is kind of quite, quite alerting to me. So um, Musical.ly is, is something that is not just a, a child making a, a song. It's... It's, it's a little business for some of these children, and, and they're, getting, they're getting rewarded, they're getting the endorphins, they're happy, they're getting praise, but they're also getting negative criticism. And for a 10-year-old, getting negative uh, criticism from people they don't know, uh, is, it can be quite upsetting for, for both them and the parents. The other picture that I wanted to alert to was WhatsApp messages. Now... Um, when I'm asking children about WhatsApp messages, it's not just one message from their friend. We are talking multiple WhatsApp groups that these children have got. So they have got 600 messages waiting for them when they get to their phone. So they, get on, they leave the school. They're not allowed to use a the phone. They're on their phone, and they have got, they've, got a, they've got a job to do. They've got to read all these messages or delete these messages or mute these messages. So multiple messages. I asked in the survey yesterday, and I didn't... That wasn't on the video. And they were saying that, that they have 20 groups at a time with multiple messages, some nice, some bad. They leave the groups, they get back in the group, they leave the group, they're the admin of the group. I, I, I can't keep up. I'm, I'm thinking this is, this, is, this is absolutely unbelievable. Um, and this is what children are, are having on their phones, not just messaging, messaging parents saying they're on the way home or whatever. They, they are, they've got lots of things to do, and this is taking a lot of their time. And what we want to do is educate the parents to say, you know, this, is, this, is, this is something that needs to be looked at. Um, and just, just have conversations that, that, to say that this, that this doesn't need to happen. Um, okay, so Elon Musk, um, I'm a big fan of Elon Musk, and he said that his children are on the phones quite a lot, they're on the computers quite a lot, so what his trade-off is to say, if they're playing a video game, it better be a, a physics-based video game. So even something like Angry Birds does have a, an element of physics in it, but they're not just um, doing something that's very, very trivial. Um, and he says, they, for every hour that they play a computer game, they have to do an hour of reading. And they say that's, that's a fair compromise or something like that, not just completely on YouTube silly videos or whatever it comes up. So he does a, a deal with his children. Um, uh, but also, the, there's lots of cool things about the internet. You know, they can make their own businesses. They can learn how to do things. Um, they can have their own, they can share their hobbies uh, you know, on the internet. So like Mr. Talley was saying, there are, there's so many, so many good things out there which we have to endorse as well and, and encourage. Um, and looking at the facts, there's lots of statistics and lots of surveys, and like Mr. Tallett was saying, you can, you can get a survey for anything. You can get um, a section of people and say 75% this and 25% that. We're not, our job isn't to throw these statistics, um, but just to say about starting conversations with, with the children. Um, so recommendations uh, to limit the amount of time that's, that, that the children use the computers, so you can start reining this back a little bit um, and saying, you know, you can buy a, a, some analysis tool that says you've been on Snapchat for 10 minutes, you've been on WhatsApp for an hour. And when you've actually downloaded one of these apps, you, you, you could do it yourself. You could actually um, see how much time you are wasting on your phone, uh, scrolling and, and checking these group messages. And it, it's quite scary. I, I did it myself, and um, it's... You know, there is there's time that you can start cutting back a little bit. Um, and also we're saying, 
you know, you can get internet and nanny, you can disable the router. That's not something, that's something I, I do to tell parents, you know, turn it off or do a, do a trade-off deal or something like that. They don't have unlimited access to the internet 24-7 at their own leisure. Um, and kids will say that they're working when they're not. So when I, we, we've got bring your own devices, we have to make sure that the children are doing the school work as opposed to doing um, playing games on the side. Because they're smarter than I am when, when it comes to deceiving me. <laughs> they, yeah, they, 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 they know how to quickly, quickly press control and three buttons to make it look as though they're working before I've even popped around and said, oh, are you working? And they, 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 can, they can press those buttons very quickly. Um, they're smart. So points to be aware of, you know, um, the 90s stigma, you know, if I got my phone out in the old days, it, people would say, ah, put your phone away. Now it's quite acceptable for a child to be talking to mum and dad while they're looking, their eyes are looking at their phone and looking at you, and, 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 and that's, that's, that seems a bit of a norm now, to be talking to somebody and talk, looking at their phone, and that's very weird. Um, so um, they love the idea of refresh, refreshing the page. It releases um, dopamine, endorphins, every time you get a like, every time that you're scrolling through the pages. It's, it's, it's great new stuff that they're seeing all the time, and that's... That's good. That's what they love, but that's uh, so addictive for both us and, the, and for them. So it's it's it's, it's mentioned in that. Um, so yeah. So we're saying, you know, it, it's your, your discretion what 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 you do. But we would say, we would say that you know one week of an internet safety week from a, an IT teacher is not enough. Um, and then I said to Mr. Tallit, shall we do internet safety first day of every term? or every half term and have an internet safety lesson. And I still don't think that's enough. I think it's got to be you know, the parents, the form teachers, just little reminders, everybody on, on board about, about these things that both uh, myself and Mr. Talek mentioned. Um, this is one, one, of few pictures that, one of the few pictures that I saw, which, which is quite a common home life now. So all the children parents on the phone, three devices going at the same time, um, parents sat around restaurants. I went on a recent trip um, to Cambodia and children would have an evening meal and they would put their headphones in, eat the meal, and there might be four around a table, put the headphones in and eat the meal and then leave the, leave the table. Not one word was said between the, the four children, and these are 14 year olds. They, they would have no they would, know, they would have no embarrassment about putting their headphones in and eating a meal around the table. And I, I thought, no, no, those devices are going back because uh, that's just not, that's not right. You've not even said one word. And that seemed to be quite acceptable now. Um, but we were saying, you know, there's lots of features you can enable on your phones, like do not disturb features, saying that this is not right, lead by example, family meals, putting the phones away. Kids will copy what... Um, parents do as well. Uh, so if, they, if they've got their phones out all the time, um, children will as well. Uh, so four things to kind of, uh, five things to limit and, and give reasons why. So uh, language, obesity, attention, uh, violence, and, uh, and, and sleep deprivation are, are five things that are a reason to start having these conversations with, uh, with children because um, we, we, I see every day uh, uh, attention spans, language, sleep patterns, uh, we see in the lessons. Okay, and then to sort of finish off, it's, it is a way to not to say don't use the phones, don't use the computers, but try to rein in this a little bit and try to disconnect from the digital world and uh, it's something that um, some some children in the surveys that I did really, uh, really know about it, and then some um, just think it's phones and, and computers and seven hours of technology is, is, is their life now. So uh, thanks for coming along to the uh, internet safety talk. Uh, I hope that we've kind of educated you a little bit about some of the things that we've come across, and, uh, and just say thanks. thanks for coming. <laughs>